Welcome and thank you for joining us. You are watching Millennium News Hour and I am Tanziba Noreen. Today we have brought up and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines. Trump criticizes Ukraine aid, talks tax cuts and tariffs with Republicans. U.S. Supreme Court birds Trump to a small trademark. Trump campaign opens new outreach office in a heavily Latin part of Pennsylvania. Biden and Zelensky sign bilateral security agreement as they push Europe to continue fight against Russia. Supreme Court rejects B to restrict access to abortion pill. Unrelenting rain puts South Florida at risk of life-threatening flooding. U.S. journalist Ivan Gershkovich to stand trial in Russia on spying charges. Hezbollah attacks nine Israeli military sites with rockets. Violent protests as senators back austerity measures of President Milley. Kuwait fire leaves many families bereft in India's Kerala. Shakib Rishad and Mustafizur take Bangladesh one step closer to Super 8. And Messi to miss Olympics but leaves door open for 2026 World Cup. You are listening to headlines now news in detail. On Thursday, Donald Trump criticized U.S. aid to Ukraine and urged Republican lawmakers to lower taxes on tips during a visit to Capitol Hill. He aimed to unify the party ahead of the November 5 election. In a private meeting, Trump pledged to expand the Republican majority in the House of Representatives, which currently stands at a narrow 218 to 13. He also promised to support the re-election of the two remaining Republican House members who voted to impeach him after the January 6, 2021 Capitol attack by his supporters. Trump advised House Republicans against pushing for a nationwide ban on abortion and encouraged them to reduce internal conflicts that hinder their effectiveness. House Speaker Mike Johnson emphasized the need for proactive leadership amidst, amidst numerous challenges. Later, Trump planned to meet with Senate Republicans to discuss campaign strategies. He is also scheduled to address the Business Roundtable, a group of over 200 corporate CEOs based in Washington, D.C. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled on Thursday that a federal trademark for Trump to a small, a mocking phrase aimed at former President Donald Trump cannot be granted. The court rejected a California lawyer's argument that denying the trademark violated his free speech rights under the Constitution. In a unanimous decision, the justices overturned a lower court's ruling that the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office's refusal to register the trademark specifically for T-shirts violated the First Amendment. The case focused on a law from 1946 that prohibits trademark a living person's name without their permission. The debate centered on whether freedom of speech protections for criticizing public figures outweigh the concerns of the trademark office about Trump's rights, as argued in the lower court. The justices agreed unanimously that the provision in question is constitutional, though they had varying reasons. Conservative Justice Clarence Thomas, writing for the majority, cited historical reasons for restrictions on trademarking names. Former President Donald Trump's campaign, along with the Republican Party, launched a Latino Americans for Trump office in rating. We believe in the American dream through hard work, said Luis Fortuno, former Puerto Rico governor 
adding necesitamos cambio for Spanish speakers meaning we need change. Trump and Republicans aim to win over Hispanic voters in Pennsylvania, a crucial swing state promising to support small businesses and reduce government. Reading known for the Monopoly Games Railroad is 67% Latino with a large Dominican and Puerto Rican population. Biden's approval among Hispanic adults has dropped, but it's uncertain if Trump can capitalize. This follows Trump's first office in Northeast Philadelphia targeting black voters, where most attendees were white. Trump recently rallied Latino support in Las Vegas, emphasizing the need for votes, but Biden's campaign criticizes his approach as racist. Biden's Pennsylvania team has 24 offices and over 100 staff, focusing on voters of Puerto Rican and Caribbean descent since last summer. President Joe Biden and leaders from the wealthiest democratic nations agreed on Thursday to provide Ukraine with a 50 billion loan this year. The loan will be backed by frozen Russian assets showing a strong support against Russia's invasion, U.S. officials said. As Ukraine fights to maintain its independence amid the Russian attack, the funds will be used for military aid, humanitarian assistance, and rebuilding efforts, a Biden administration official explained. Before a joint press conference, Biden and Ukrainian President Vladimir signed a security agreement. Biden emphasized that these actions aimed to send a clear message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. He cannot outlast us. He cannot divide us, Biden declared. We stand firmly with Ukraine. The U.S. is prepared to provide the full $50 billion if needed, expecting other countries to share the financial burden. The loan will be secured by interest from approximately $300 billion in frozen Russian assets. The agreement was announced during a summit of the Group of Seven Nations, which include advanced industrial democracies like Germany, Japan, France, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Italy. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony. Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV, and also in all European countries and Australia, available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. In a setback for those against abortion, the Supreme Court decided on Thursday not to hear a challenge to the abortion pill Mifepristone, allowing the drug to continue being widely available. The court ruled unanimously that a group of doctors opposing the FDA's decision to make the pill more accessible lacked the legal right to sue. President Joe Biden commented that while this decision maintains easy access to the pill, the fight for women's reproductive rights continues. He noted that in many states, it remains difficult or impossible for women to access needed treatments. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, writing for the court, explained that the plaintiffs did not demonstrate any harm, so their concerns about FDA actions should be addressed through other channels, such as the regulatory and legislative processes. The case brought by doctors represented by the conservative legal group Alliance Defending Freedom did not resolve the core issue of whether the FDA acted lawfully in easing restrictions on the pill. 
Heavy downpours continued to flood South Florida on Thursday, adding to over a foot of rain that fell earlier in the week. Forecasters issued flood watches or warnings for areas home to 8 million people. Broward and Miami-Dade counties faced life-threatening flooding as water covered roads and neared homes, said the National Weather Service. Some places received up to 25 inches of rain since Monday, noted forecaster Bob Oravec from the Weather Prediction Center in Maryland. North Miami Beach saw 20.4 inches of rain and Big Cypress National Preserve in the Everglades recorded 25 inches. Helen Till Beach, with 19.3 inches, experienced extreme flooding unlike anything resident Luis Garcia Infante had seen in 13 years. The slow-moving storm, a weak tropical depression, is expected to stay over Florida until early Saturday before moving out to sea. Despite not becoming a tropical storm, it may signal a busy hurricane season starting June 1. With more rain expected, Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency for five South Florida counties. Now it's time for Global Updates. Russian prosecutors announced Thursday that they have sent the case of detained U.S. reporter Ivan Gershkovich to court. Gershkovich, 32 years old, was arrested on March 29, 2023 in Yekaterinburg, accused of spying for the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. He allegedly collected information about a Russian tank factory, a charge that carries up to 20 years in prison. The FSB, Russia's main security agency, claimed they caught him red-handed trying to obtain military secrets. Gershkovich and his employer, the Wall Street Journal, denied the charges and called for his release. The White House labeled the charges as ridiculous and President Joe Biden called the detention totally illegal. The Russian prosecutor's office said Gershkovich's case would be heard in Yekaterinburg but did not specify the date or whether the trial would be public. They claimed he collected secret information about a defense plant on CIA instructions but did not provide documentary evidence to support the charges. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment here we come millennium news hour to get you connected with top usa and international trending news which includes local news political news world news business news health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. You are watching latest global updates. Lebanon's Hezbollah launched rockets and weaponized drones at nine Israeli military sites, escalating border hostilities for the second day. The attacks retaliated against an Israeli strike on Tuesday that killed a senior Hezbollah commander. Hezbollah fired Katusha and Falak rockets at six Israeli military locations and launched drones at Israel's Northern Command Headquarters, an intelligence office, and a military barracks. This included at least 30 attack drones, marking Hezbollah's largest drone assault during the ongoing eight month Israeli offensive in Gaza. The group said the attacks were in response to the commander's death and had already conducted eight retaliatory strikes on Wednesday. Israeli strikes have killed over 300 Hezbollah fighters in Lebanon, exceeding the group's losses in their 2006 conflict. 
Argentina's Senate narrowly approved President Javier Milei's first set of austerity measures, marking an initial victory for his radical economic deregulation agenda. Police in Buenos Aires used water cannons and tear gas to control violent protests. Demonstrators opposing Millet's cuts and deregulation plans clashed with police, throwing sticks, stones and Molotov cocktails and overturning cars. Dozens of protesters were treated on the streets and 20 officers were injured. At least five opposition lawmakers were hospitalized after being pepper sprayed by police. Thousands of bankers, teachers, truckers and union workers gathered around Congress chanting and protesting throughout the day. After 11 hours of heated debate, senators voted 37 to 36 in favor of the bill, giving Malay a significant legislative win. However, individual measures still needed approval in a vote expected to last through the night. If the Senate approves the modified bills, the lower house must also pass them before Millet can officially enact his first law since taking office in December. A fire at a labor housing facility in Kuwait's Mangov City killed 40 Indians from Kerala and nine others, including three Filipinos. India's Ministry of External Affairs confirmed the deaths on Thursday. The fire left families devastated, including a father of two planning to quit his job and a 29-year-old visiting his family in August. Kuwait's Foreign Minister Abdullah Ali Yahya reported that the death toll rose to at least 50 after one more person died from injuries. Over 50 workers were injured, some critically, but their nationalities are not yet confirmed. Kuwait's population largely consists of foreign workers from South and Southeast Asia living in overcrowded conditions. In Kerala, officials reported 24 dead from the state. The Indian government arranged a special flight to bring the bodies back. Prime Minister Narendra Modi pledged full assistance and announced a payment of 200,000 rupees to the next of kin. India's junior foreign minister Kirti Vardhan Singh traveled to Kuwait to assist survivors and handle repatriations, stating that DNA tests are being conducted to identify church bodies. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony. Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV and also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 17,923.41. The NYSE composite is decreased by 82.54 points or 0.46%. Tokyo's stock close price is 38,720.47. The Nikkei 225 index is decreased by 156.24 points or 0.40%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,028.92. The Shanghai index is decreased by 8.55 points or 
Hong Kong stock close price is 18,112.63. The Hang Seng index is increased by 174.79 points or 0.97%. Bombay stock close price is 76,810.90. The Sensex index is increased by 204.33 points or 0.27%. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Bangladesh moved closer to a Super 8 spot at the T20 World Cup 2024 with a 25-run win over the Netherlands in Kingstown, their first international match there in almost a decade. Shakib Al Hassan returned to form, scoring his first T20 international 50 in 20 innings, leading Bangladesh to 159 for 5. The Netherlands started well in their chase, reaching 111 for 3 in the 15th over. However, leg spinner Rishad Hussain's three wickets in four balls changed the game. Shakib and Mustafizur Rahman then tightened the pressure. Mustafizur's cutters in the 19th over, where he gave away only three runs, sealed the win, restricting the Netherlands to 134 for eight. Lionel Messi, an eight-time Ballon d'Or winner, confirmed in an ESPN interview that he will not compete for a second gold medal with Argentina at the Paris Olympics this summer. He discussed the decision with Argentina's Olympic coach Javier Mascherano, citing the Copa America schedule and the need to avoid prolonged absences from his club, Inter Miami. At 37, Messi prefers to be selective with his commitments. He will play in the Copa America from June 20 to July 14 in the U.S. but will skip the Olympics, which start on July 26. Messi hasn't ruled out participating in a record-breaking sixth World Cup in 2026 to be held in the U.S., Canada and Mexico. He stated he will only participate if he feels good and everything is in place, emphasizing that it's too early to commit. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast.
Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. Trump criticizes Ukraine aid, talks tax cuts and tariffs with Republicans. U.S. Supreme Court birds Trump to a small trademark. Trump campaign opens new outreach office in a heavily Latin part of Pennsylvania. Biden and Zelensky sign bilateral security agreement as they push Europe to continue fight against Russia. Supreme Court rejects bid to restrict access to abortion pill. Unrelenting rain puts South Florida at risk of life-threatening flooding. U.S. journalist Ivan Gershkovich to a stand trial in Russia on spying charges. Hezbollah attacks nine Israeli military sites with rockets. Violent protests as senators back austerity measures of President Milley. Kuwait fire leaves many families bereft in India's Kerala. Shakib Rishad and Mustafiz take Bangladesh one step closer to Super 8. And Messi to miss Olympics but leaves the door open for 2026 World Cup. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page, subscribe our YouTube channel and visit our websites. Our website addresses are www.millenniumnews24.com and www.millenniumtv24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV and also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.